and where is where are you at uh, writing this out? Uh, like where am I at, like location wise? Yes. I'm still in Nashville. I, I'm currently in my pantry, as you can see. This is where our uh, our computer is. We don't. Uh, I don't have an office in my house, uh, so this is where I'm. I'm set up for you guys today, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm in Nashville. Uh, I ordered some gear um, to train with, um, and basically, I'm just been following David Good, our uh, our uh, strength coach's program. I mean, honestly, there's it's impossible to mimic hockey without playing hockey. It's one of the few sports that's that way. Uh, you can you could be a marathon runner and be in unbelievable shape and step on the ice and do a practice and feel like you're going to die. Um, that's kind of the way it goes. Uh, so you do what you can. I think. Uh, the program has been, I've really enjoyed it so far. It's had a bit of everything. Uh, there's been cardio, a lot of strength training, core, all, all kinds, of, some, some like uh, quick feet and agility, things like that. Um, it's been, it's been good to, you know, stay, stay with it. Um, I'm, you know, it's kind of funny over the course of a season, you're in great hockey shape, but you get in the gym, you try and work out and you feel terrible. And then in the summer, it's the, it's the opposite. You feel amazing in the gym and feel terrible on the ice. So I'm probably, uh, more towards that summer shape at this point, I can definitely probably do more in the gym right now than I could have during the season. But, you know, if you put me on the ice uh, right now, I, I think we, all of us would be, uh, would be dying a little bit. So it's just the nature of it. And uh, we, we've been through it. We go through it every summer when we start skating. So um, if, or when we do come back, it's, uh, that's going to be the challenge. Is that good, Teresa? Yes. Thank you so much, Matt. No problem. Brooks Bratton, nationalpredators.com. You are up next and are unmuted. Hey, Matt, it's good to see you. Um, just curious uh, what you've been doing here in Nashville, how things are going, and uh, how you've been adjusting to quarantine life. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, you know what, it's, it's been interesting. Um, I haven't gone as crazy as I thought I was going to at the start. Um, it's been really nice to spend time with, uh, my little guy. Uh, he's at such a fun age right now. He just, he's actually 15 months today. So, um, been chasing him around and, uh, watching him grow. He changes every two days, starts saying and doing new things. So, um, you know, that along with trying to stay in shape best I can, and obviously the mental break's nice too. So, um, it's been a, it, it had been a, you know, grind of a season uh, mentally, and we've gone through a lot of ups and downs as a team and individually, you know, so many guys in the team. And um, we really loved where we were at the end of the, uh, like when the stoppage happened. And um, it, it was nice if we we're going to leave it off on that note, whether it's, you know, hitting pause or whether it's hitting stop until next season, it's a, it's a good place to leave off. So, um, you know, it's uh, trying to stay ready and then just enjoying family time and trying to, uh, and the weather's been great lately too. The first two weeks it rained every day. So it's been nice to have some, uh, some sun and some heat. Sorry, my little guy just woke up. You can hear him in the background. Uh, all right, uh, Kayla, can you hear me? You are up next. Kayla Anderson, WKRN. Oh, wait. All right, try now, Kayla. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Hey, Matt. Um, hope you're doing well. I guess when play does resume, if it does resume, there's a lot of talk of, you know, going right into the playoffs. What are your thoughts on not uh, finishing out the regular season going straight into that? Because there's probably not going to be a lot of time. Yeah, I'm good with that. Um, I think we've worked, you know, as a team, you work all season to make the playoffs and um you know, obviously it'd be great to recoup the, the dollars lost and everything like that as much as we can as a, as a player group and as a ownership group or as a, yeah, as a league, but uh, you know, coming from a purely hockey perspective um, we're in a spot right now, I guess, whether you look at the standings or winning percentage, it puts us in the playoffs. And that's what we, that's what the last 13 games were, were there for to accomplish. So um, I'm going to jump in right in to be honest with you. And Justin Bradford, you are unmuted. Justin Bradford, Penalty Box Radio, fire away. Uh, so obviously it's something that's affecting the entire sports world and not just hockey. Have you been in contact with athletes from other sports to see how they're dealing with it, just to kind of put everybody in the same boat to see what they're going through as well? 
Uh, no, not really. I don't know. Uh, I don't really know anybody from any other sports well enough to kind of call them up and, and chat. Um, I've talked to some people in the music industry around town, some friends that uh, are, we're supposed to have tours, you know, starting, you know, very shortly, but um, obviously that's being pushed back, even rehearsals and things are being pushed back. The crazy thing about this is it, it's effect, it affects, it's affecting the, the entire world and, and there's nobody that's exempt from it. And, um, and you got to kind of figure that sports and entertainment might be the last thing to, to be back to normal, um, which is tough, right? Because it's, it, it brings so many people together and um, both, I mean, physically and, and in terms of emotionally and, and mentally in terms of like, you know, it's a pastime, it's an entertainment. Uh, it's great for the world, but at the same time, it's, you know, what other, industry puts 20,000 people or 75,000 people or a hundred thousand people within inches of each other. There's not many things. So this is so complicated. And, um, you know, if we do see sports resume, whether it's this season or next season for all the sports, who knows what it's going to look like. So, um, I mean, it's just a guessing game at this point for me, that's the biggest thing I'm worried about and looking at is in, is just the, the impact that this has on the world and us as, you know, human race. And, and um, you know, there's a lot bigger things going on than sports. So it kind of puts that on the back burner, I guess, in your mind, because you just realize how sports is just, it, it, it's such a, it's such a pastime and, and something that's, that, that is a, you know, it brings people enjoyment and it's not maybe an essential part of, okay, let's just get the world back online here. So who knows what it's going to look like. Up next, Adam Vingan from The Athletic. You are unmuted, fire away. Hi, Matt, good to see you. To follow up on an earlier question, if the, if the season were to resume with the, with the playoffs, what do you feel like, would, what would be the most equitable format for the playoffs, you think, if the season were to come back? Who knows? I mean, it really depends on when it was going to come back or potentially, I mean, there's obviously a big lead time and just getting guys back in shape and getting guys feeling good and back together and getting some normalcy back in that. I mean, it's so hard to speculate. I can't imagine there can be fans. I mean, I just can't see that happening if in the near future, I just, um, with the, un, all the unknowns of this, it just seems and that's me speculating. I mean, I'm no expert on this. I, there's very few experts on this. Even the, even the experts seem to change their tune every couple of days. So, but um, I could see us. It's going to depend on what when it happens and the time the time frames we're given. Um, you could see shortened series. You could see. I, I don't even know. I, I have no clue. I think it's we're so far away from that right now. Sorry, hey buddy. Um, I think we're so far away from that right now that. Um, you know, it, it's just a wait and see. You can't, you can't start making plans until it's even remotely possible at this point. So, and there's, it'll be agreed upon between the, the PA and the league. And I know they're talking, we're all talking closely right now. <laughs> this is Bo here. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, I have no clue. It's, it's, I wish I had a crystal ball. I know a lot of people wish we do, but um, um, it's not the case. One comes to Dave Foster, you are unmuted, and I think the show just got stolen. <laughs> God. Hey, Matt. Hey, Bo. How you doing? Uh, following up on that, um, in that scenario, you were talking about how it would take a certain amount of time, perhaps, to get back into shape. If they do throw you guys into the playoffs, how long do you think it would take, realistically, to get into game shape? Would it be a scenario where you're – kind of like at the beginning of the season does it even up things a bit uh, i know this is all speculation but it's kind of wide open at this point yeah I, I think you need at least three weeks of from the time facilities open to time you play in a game i think three weeks minimum um maybe a couple of weeks or a week together or 10 days 10 days type thing um yeah i mean there's so much that goes into it and because you can't mimic it like i don't even have a hockey stick here like i can't even just go out and stick handle my driveway like i don't have a stick <laughs> so um it, it's so it's so complicated that way but i think to, to put a good product on the ice and to, and to make sure guys aren't getting hurt i think um 
I think you need by that amount of time. That would be my guess. Uh, whether we have that or not, we'll see. But I, I think for it to be to ensure that no injury, no guys are having, you know, groin pulls and hip flexors and other things like that, that we all deal with in camp every year. I mean, st- after day one of camp, there's five groins and hip flexors that are injured and there's five guys taking two, three days off. So, I mean, you got to kind of go through that buffer period and it's just so complicated. It's uh, it really is. And there's no, there's no right answer right now because we just don't know what the landscape looks like. Matt, Matt, you want to go get your banana shirt on so you guys can match? <laughs> yeah, well, bananas and pajamas here. He just woke up from his nap. <laughs> Brooks Bratton, you are up. Matt, uh, from a hockey standpoint, when we talked to John Hines a few days ago, and, and he was just mentioning that either he or other members of the coaching staff have been in touch with players and, and kind of rotating in on a basis, just checking in. I'm curious from your standpoint what the balance has been like from, as you said, just being at home and hanging out with Bo and enjoying family life. And then a hockey standpoint, how much are you still thinking about the game? How, how much from a team aspect has there been in that sense? Um, not a lot. Um, it's tough. You can't, there's nothing to talk about really. Uh, we have no idea. It's not like you can prepare for opponent X or Y or whatever. Right. Cause we have no idea what the format's going to look like. We don't know whether we're playing the Toronto Maple Leafs next. That's who we're supposed to play. We don't know whether we're playing the Vegas Golden Knights if, if it was based on point percentage. We don't know if we're playing St. Louis Blues if it was based on standings. And we don't know if we're playing a play-in game against like Minnesota Wild, for example. I mean, we know kind of all the scenarios, but there's nothing really to prepare, prepare for or even – we have no idea. It's just – it's. I think – Mentally, you stay plugged in. I know I'm trying to have as much of a routine as I can. I'm, I'm putting the work in and making sure that I'm taking care of myself, but I'm also trying to give myself a mental break because there's nothing worse than going in the gym and grinding away and grinding away and grinding away and trying to make gains. And it's tough because you don't have the right gear and the equipment. And then all of a sudden the season and playoffs get canceled. And now you've got three months of training in front of you. Um, I think that's uh, I think that's just a, that's a tough balance to keep. And I think the biggest thing right now is you just, it's everything in moderation. You're trying to stay plugged in as much as you can, but also unplug enough that you're mentally healthy. And um, you're just trying to kind of ride the wave there right in the middle. Justin Bradford, you are unmuted. At Justin Bradford again. So obviously I'm sure you're enjoying spending more time with Bo, like right now being, being at home and everything. Are there any other skills you've been able to kind of hone in on or learn because you have so much extra time now, or you can really just kind of focusing on mentally staying well and physically staying well too? Um, probably no new skills. Um, I know my wife probably wishes I took up cooking or something, but um, yeah, nothing, uh, nothing crazy. I've been playing a lot more guitar. Actually, right when this thing happened, I went and bought a, bought a guitar. I didn't have a nice acoustic down here, so I went and bought one. Um, been working on that a little bit. Um, been working with a buddy of mine, um, who, uh, who plays professionally. Just, we've had like one lesson on, uh, on, uh, FaceTime. Um, we're supposed to connect again this week. So, um, it's been nice to be able to spend some time doing that. I didn't do much of that this year. Um, even with the move to Nashville, there wasn't a lot of, uh, time for music. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been nice to kind of sink into that a little bit and, and enjoy that. Kayla Anderson, you are unmuted. Hey, Matt. So I know that a lot of people, it's hard for them to relate. Sorry, my dog's in the background. To relate um, to, I guess, this COVID-19 unless, you know, you have somebody that has been affected by it. But there have been so many people affected by it. And even in the entertainment business, and I know that... um, Diffie was a guy that that you have grown up listening to. And when that happened, I'm sure that's something that that really hit home for you. Just somebody that you've, you know, kind of grown up listening to. Yeah, that was crazy. Um, that was kind of the, the day for me that it kind of became like um, not real, but like it's almost like it affected my world in directly in some way, like my personal life, if that makes sense. To know that, uh, like I said, I grew up with, um, I grew up listening to Joe Diffie and my dad and I were big, are obviously will always be big fans. And so part of how I grew up and to lose somebody like that, um, just so suddenly and without warning and no prior health issues, nothing. I mean, that's kind of, that was kind of the moment I was like, geez, this is really scary. And then you hear some of the stories about people that have it that are, you know, 
that what they're going through and not being able to have family or friends or anybody around. I mean, it's, it's, it's terrible. And, um, that's why I said before, it, it's so much bigger than sports and yeah, it's, it, it sucks for fans not to be able to watch us play and watch all the other sports and it sucks for us to not be able to play, but I, you gotta, it makes it easier not to play and not to have normal life right now. Um, if you have the right perspective and realize how lucky we all are to be healthy. Um, the ones that are healthy and the ones that have had it and gotten over it. Um, and just to have the, I'm never going to get to, and well, the perspective I've had through the whole thing is I'm never going to get to spend this, this time I have with Bo right now, ever. It's never going to happen again. Cause as he gets older, he's going to have his own stuff. Um, I'm going to be more busy than I am right now. This is the least busy I've ever been, um, you know, <laughs> since I was a kid. Um, and I think that's a cool thing that we can, you know, that's the kind of maybe the, the silver lining in it is we get an opportunity to kind of take a deep breath and stop our busy lives and, and, uh, be close to the people that, you know, we love and, and care about. And, um, maybe if not, even if it's not physically, maybe it's over FaceTime, maybe you're talking to people more, but yeah, this is a scary thing. And it's, and like I said, doesn't discriminate and it's very real and we all have to make sure we're doing our part to uh, minimize it. Adam, I saw you lowered your hand. Uh, no one else has their hand up. Did you have a follow-up to that? Well, since Bo is in the picture, we might as well ask uh, if there are any milestones that you've been able to experience with Bo during this downtime. Um, he's, I, I don't know if there are any milestones because uh, he was walking before, but um, just like, like two days ago he started saying like banana and cracker i mean it's something small but he was never saying anything that had two syllables so all of a sudden he just comes over that um yeah he's just changing so much he sees he, even like he'd be outside and he sees a plane plane goes by and he says bye to it bye bye um just it's so cool to watch him um i think the biggest milestone i think would be was one that was scary for us was about a week ago now he just i think it was last monday so not this past one the one before he just started climbing on things like just climbing like his little picnic table climbing up on the couch climbing the coffee table and it was like whoa <laughs> and uh we had about three days there where he was into everything and just a bit of a terror but uh it just showed how far he's been coming physically and mentally so um it's pretty special to spend this time and get to see it and not have to see it over facetime Dang. i don't see any more hands raised does anybody else have any more questions for matt before we go going once going twice all right thank you all thanks matt for joining us uh we're working on more of these for next week um so stay tuned take care thanks, matt. guys stay healthy stay safe